my family's been there since time immemorial. As a Coast Salish woman, we, you know, our relationship is with the water more than the land. Everybody in my family has been fishermen and works on the water. Gulf Islands off the east coast of Vancouver Island. It was named after a Spanish explorer, Dionisio Galliano, who was among the first Europeans to navigate in the islands in 1792. Galliano Island acquired its modern name in 1859. Long before Dionisio Galliano came here from Spain, Coast Salish people occupied this territory for thousands of years. They hunted and gathered a wide variety of food from the shores, water, and land. Fishing was and is an essential part of life for coastal people. Catching enough fish to provide not only for themselves, but for family and community. For centuries, fish have been an important source of food in cultural, social, and ceremonial life. After the Europeans arrived, the demand for fish increased and commercial fishery began. As the sea filled up with boats, a fishing practice moved from catch what you need to catch as much as you can. This was a part of adjusting to the changing world and the new economic system. Aboriginal women owned and operated their own fishing boats during this period, and others worked on boats. Due to mismanagement of the fish resource, overfishing ensued. Fish stocks could not sustain the pace of harvest, and the commercial fishery all but died. There are now official fishing regulations and restrictions that introduce designated fishing seasons and locations. When I look back at it and I think about how much has been lost over the years with it, um, like. We used to have a lot of people at the north end, lots of fishermen on Galliano. Uh, down at the south end, there was always, you know, like 10 boats down in Whalers Bay and Montague. It's had a big impact, the, the loss of it. There's um, two boats, uh, one boat now actually, and that's my cousin Lloyd down the south end in Whalers Bay. You can still make a living at fishing. It's a little harder. You got to lease a lot of quotas now where before we could go out and catch what we could catch. Now in order to keep fishing you have to have the quotas. So. Now it's been a good life for me anyways. Cod fishing doesn't even exist anymore does it? No, they're not even allowed to fish cod. But uh, a lot of people on this island particularly made a good living fishing cod when I was growing up. There isn't even a season for us. We go out, there's lots of lingcod. Probably more lingcod around now than there was back in those days, because there were so many fishermen in those days. At one time, the biggest fleet of lingcod fishermen were the Japanese. And now, mostly in the fishing industry, a lot of it are natives now. But, uh, a lot of people have gotten out. A lot of my friends that had boats similar to mine and the other ones uh, opt to, to sell out and, and do other things. I don't know whether I'm dumb or what, but I'm sticking with <laughs> fishing. Personally, I, uh, yeah, I, I didn't like the, uh, the way it was changing there in the 80s and the early 80s and mid 80s. and. The, didn't think it was quite the future for me anyway at that time. No, I guess I was kind of right. It has changed quite a bit from what it was back then. But, uh, it won't be back either like it once was when we were kids. It's changed for good. But, uh, you gotta be, I guess you gotta be able to flex with the change of the industry, I guess. 
Although some traditional fishing practices have had to be modified in response to environmental change, problems of access, and government restrictions, cultural fishing expectations continue within Aboriginal communities today. Moreover, expectations of fish on the table exist for everyone who lives on the coast.